Like Rudy said, I accomplished a lot of things over the course of my basketball career. Had a real opportunity to travel this entire world and see a lot of amazing things. Those accolades, those achievements, like you as coaches, really gave me a platform and an opportunity to talk about something that's a little bit more important to me. And that is this issue of violence against women and girls. Right now, I am a man on the forefront of ending violence against women and girls. As he stated, I'm the executive director of MEND. MEND brings together two words, men and end, because we believe that violence against women and girls simply cannot end unless men become a part of the solution. So what we do is simple. MEND is a primary prevention initiative dedicated to ending violence against women and girls by engaging men to educate young boys to change this culture that supports violence. I want to start by telling you a quick story. I recently asked a group of 12 high school athletes, what would you do if one day you came across a half-naked girl on Instagram? Now they all laughed. But they gave me some honest answers. Some of them said that I would follow her, I'd like the picture. One bravely said, I'd send her a message. When I asked what that message would say, the response was probably something inappropriate. When I started to go down the list of negatives about some of those responses, I stopped and I gave them a scenario. The same scenario that I'm going to give you today. Imagine you're walking in on a conversation a group of your friends are having. And they're talking about one of the young ladies that one of them hooked up with. And imagine as you get closer to this group, you start hearing messages that are objectifying, demeaning, and disrespectful about that young lady. Now you're walking and you're about an arm's length away. And you see that they're, they're looking at something on a phone. You want to know what all the fuss is about, so you reach over and get the phone. And you see a picture. And on that picture is your little sister. Does that make you angry? Do you get upset? Do you want to stand up and do something about it? Do you want to protect the integrity of your little sister? This is why MEND was created. Because every woman and every girl that is a victim of domestic violence, rape, or sexual assault is someone's daughter, someone's sister, and someone's friend. Violence against women and girls is an epidemic in our country, in our state, and in our city. Tennessee ranks sixth in the country for men killing women. One out of every four women experience domestic violence. And if those national statistics hold true in our city, then one out of every five girls will experience sexual assault or rape on our college campuses. Our Metro Nashville police respond to a domestic violence call every 20 minutes. Men, we have a problem. Some of you may be sitting back saying to yourselves, this doesn't really affect me. I, I'd never do anything like this to a woman. It's just not around me. It's not in my world. You know, one of the biggest misperceptions about violence against women is that abuse or violence only happens in certain neighborhoods or it has a certain look or it's only in certain establishments. But I tell you, after seeing ministers step down, athletes' career ended. CEOs forced to resign, politicians in scandals, and teachers suspended. Can we honestly say that violence is only a problem for any one group of people? I don't think so. But as men, I believe we try. For our own sanity, 
we try. And we'll go to great lengths to convince ourselves that we have nothing to do with the abuse and the men that are our friends and we associate with and the men that we support have nothing to do with the abuse. And God forbid the women and girls that we love and care about have never been abused. That's what we keep telling ourselves over and over and over again. And we don't feel the need to really get involved until it hits home. Women have been working on this issue of violence against women for many, many years. The YWCA here in Nashville, for example, is the leading provider of domestic violence services over 40 years. But we, men, the good guys, have been absent from the equation. And now women are inviting us to be a part of the solution. I think it was James Brown who said it best after the horrific incidents of Ray Rice. He said, so this is yet another call to men to stand up and take responsibility for their thoughts, their words, their deeds, and to get help or give help because our silence is deafening and deadly. Our silence? Yeah, our, our silence is a problem. You see, we have a problem when men find it more important to fit in and not offend than to call out the sexist jokes that we hear in the locker room at the gym. We have a problem when coaches are more comfortable defending their star players who have been accused of sexual assault rather than calling out the crime for what it is. You know, like when Johnny Manziel open hand slaps his girlfriend and so many people said that he just needs help. We have a problem when men have to hear horrible stories from their own daughters and wives before taking a stance to change this culture that allows the violence to occur. Men, we have a problem. But as men, I fear that we have become comfortable with the silence as really a way to disconnect from this issue. And there's a confidence that we walk around with when we know that those we care for are safe. Just think about it. How would you feel if you asked and the women in your life broke their silence at the kitchen table and told you about what happened in college at a party or what happened with a high school sweetheart or what happened walking down the street passing a stranger. See, we can't be naive to think that only what we've experienced, only what we've been exposed to is all that exists. Even I was a little taken aback when one woman put it this way on social media. She said, what men fear most about going to prison is what women fear most about walking down the street. But I have good news. The end of violence against women and girls, it stops here, it stops now, and it stops with us. And by us, I mean you and I, men and women, working together to end this problem. We are inviting all good men to end violence against women and girls by becoming a part of the solution. Just imagine in a few years when our mayor is asked, what did you do to make Nashville the safest city in the nation for women and girls? And she can respond proudly and say that it was the men who stood up. That it was men who held other men accountable. It was men who challenged sexist jokes and derogatory conversations in their places of work and worship. It was men who refused to turn a blind eye to the bad behavior of athletes and politicians and then still go buy a ticket to the game or vote for them in the next election. It was the men who supported our female family and friends 
and helped unsilence the violence that is happening in our community. And yes, it was the men who stepped up as role models and leaders and showed our youth a new definition of healthy masculinity as husbands, fathers, and friends. So what do we do? Where do we start? We first start by learning and elevating the issues of violence against women and girls. Talking about the fact that Tennessee is sixth in the country for men killing women. Talking about the fact that one in four women experience domestic violence. Talking about the fact that one in five women experience sexual assault and abuse on our college campuses. Talk about what has happened at Baylor and Stanford University while realizing that this kind of violence is happening across our nation at other universities. Talk about what happened at Bell Mead with the murder of our city's chief epidemiologist by her husband or the former Metro Councilman who tried to silence a domestic violence victim to protect his relative. Talk about the stories and use them to learn more and to teach others about this epidemic. Become engaged. Attend forums like this one and the men forums that are hosted by the Nashville Predators. Watch TED Talks. There's some really, really good ones by people like Tony Porter and Dr. Jackson Katz and Joe Ehrman, who's here with us today, and Pat Shea. And then engage other men in the conversation. Talk to the women in your life about their personal experiences. Ask the men in your life and discuss what is happening as it relates to violence in the community and discuss how even small acts that challenge this culture of violence help create a citywide change. Challenge comments that tease and harass men and boys for not being manly enough. Let people know that you find it offensive and limiting. And then educate young men and boys on healthy masculinity. Teach young people to value and respect women and girls on their journey to becoming great men. Challenge yourself and others not to use language or expressions that denigrate women and girls. And give equal affection to your sons and your daughters. Demonstrate to them that healthy masculinity and healthy manhood involves hugging, holding hands, and kindness. In closing, the end of violence against women and girls ends and begins with men, good men. Will you stand with me today to help unsilence the violence? Because I believe that if you're not a part of the solution, you're a part of the problem. Every one of you, when you got here today in your packet, there is a mend coach sheet. It's a pledge. It's something that over 150 coaches in the city of Nashville and on the outskirts have pledged that this is how we're going to coach. This is how we're going to interact with our young boys. And this is how we're going to teach them what it really means to be a man as we respect women and girls. Today, you have an opportunity to make that same pledge. Today, you have an opportunity to make sure that you're teaching these young boys what it means to respect and value women and girls. Men of Nashville and coaches from around this region, let's join the women and be a part of the solution. The end begins with men. Thank you.